All right, I did it again. Facebook, I'm sorry. Everybody here just heard a wonderful introduction to our worship service. All right, focus on the buttons, Hunter. Focus on the buttons. All right. We welcome everybody who's joining us here on Facebook Live this morning. You do have sound. There's nothing wrong with your device. It's just these fingers were not working. So we're entering into God's gates with thanksgiving and praise this morning. I, uh, I can't say thank you enough to Hazel. Hazel has done a wonderful job of keeping our worship experiences fresh and full of joy. Don't you feel <laughs> Hazel's joy when she's worshiping with us? Thank you very much, Hazel. Yes, thank you. And she's working hard and, and uh, staying safe at home and continues to help us out with our worship music. Well, Faith Kids, we want to welcome you this morning. I hope that everybody is doing well. Back to school. Hope you had a great first week of second semester back, and I uh, hope everything's going great. And this morning, we're going to look at a story about a young man named Dominic, and we're going to think about God's creativity in our lives. So welcome, Faith Kids. This is Dominique. Dominique loves his family, being creative, and learning new things. One activity that he has worked hard to learn is Taekwondo. He recently earned his red belt. It takes a lot of hard work, dedication, and creativity to accomplish a goal like that. Speaking of creativity, Dominique not only loves Taekwondo, he also creates amazing stop-motion animation. It's the stop-motion animation, like you would place a Lego character down, and there's this app that you press, like the cap, like a, you take a picture, then you move the character a little bit, take a picture, and that would put it together, like instead of it being like multiple pictures, it looked like a person is walking, or jumping, or whatever. Dominique is always looking out for new ways to be creative. So I was watching this show on television. It really inspired me because it was all different dessert chefs trying to create these amazing desserts and wh whoever got the best one would win. And that really inspired me to do it. And I'm like, hmm. After Dominique was inspired to create tasty and beautiful desserts, he watched videos on the internet to learn how to decorate cakes using fondant. Fondant is a thick paste made of sugar and water. 
used to decorate cakes. First I would, would just start with a big lump of fondant. Then I would take little pieces of the fondant and roll it into little balls. And I would take some wax paper and fold it over the balls of fondant and I would press down on it so those would be the petals. Then make it a little extra thin on one of the ends so it gets that nice petal feeling to it. Then I would take one petal and I would roll it up so it's like the first petal, then take the second petal, put it on there. And then when I'm done with putting them all on, I try to like open it out so it looks really cool. Then I'd take green fondant and I would roll it out like long, stick it on there so that's the stem and add them together, like put a little water on it, kind of let it stick, let it dry for like about an hour and then there you go. Dominique loves God and he knows that God is creative. So we are creative. He understands that his creativity comes from God. Yeah, God is very, very creative. He created the earth and he made so many different things. People think that they can use all this creativity from the one creation master, God. Dominique also understands that he should use his creativity to share the love of Jesus with his friends and family. To share his word, he wants us to be creative, like, so it's technically our job to be creative, to, tr to teach the words of the creation master. So we gotta, we gotta be imaginative and we gotta think. We gotta think about what we say. We gotta really inspire people with our creativity. that Dominic uses the creative master or the master creator and um, it's wonderful to think that God likes to put that creativity in us the creativity that made as Dominic said so many things <laughs> that are in this world so kids I hope that you can tap into and appreciate and enjoy your own creativity and remember that that comes from your master creator and that really helps us to enjoy life. Have a wonderful week, kids, and look forward to seeing you again very soon. Well, this is uh, second Sunday of 2021, and one of the things that we do here at Faith Church is we share the leadership of uh, the ministry that takes place here at Faith. And we do that through a steering committee that's made up of officers and heads of different ministries. And we have different sets of terms, uh, two years or three years, depending on, the, uh, depending on the position. And so every year we tend to have folks that have finished up their terms and then folks that are starting new terms. And today is kind of our official, um, we call it an affirmation of ministry. Uh, where we are concentrating on being thankful for those who have completed their terms of service to ministry at uh, Faith Church on the steering committee. And uh, we're praying for and supporting those who are starting this new year. So normally we have all of our 
uh, steering committee come up front and uh, because obviously life is complicated now I, we're simplifying things this morning so we've already kind of gone through the words of affirmation with our steering committee and asked them to affirm uh, their willingness to serve and uh, we will as a congregation uh, express our support and love for the uh, steering committee for 2021. Affirmation of ministry is an act whereby a local church recognizes the diverse gifts of its members and celebrates the particular ministry of each person in the life of the church. The Spirit's presence is shown in some way in each person for the good of all. All of us who are in Christ's body and each one is part of it. We like to begin our affirmation of ministry by thanking those who have finished up their terms at the end of 2020, Marcy Steiner, Paula Akasiewicz, Pat Leader, Donna Pecco, and Carol McDonald. Thank you so much. Let's give them a hand and say thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you for your service to our church through the steering committee. And these are the individuals who are going to be serving on the steering committee for Faith Church in 2021. Uh, our president will be Gary Mealy, our vice president, Beverly Johnson, our treasurer, Kelly Phillips, our secretary, Diane Hurling. Discipleship will be Bob uh, Santum. Uh, outreach will be Karen Overly. Property will be Bob McDonald. And shepherds will be Wilma Osterhout. These people have been called by God in accordance with the faith and order of the church to serve among us. They have accepted their call and are before us, some in person, some virtually, uh, expressing their willingness to share. So these are some of the words that I've sent out to our steering committee members for 2021 uh, that they have responded to already. And I ask them, sisters and brothers in Christ, it's an honor to be entrusted with responsibility for particular service and ministry of the church having prayerfully considered the duties and responsibilities of your ministry are you prepared to serve with the help of God in Christ's name for the glory of God if so say I am and these individuals have responded with I am and then another question do you promise to exercise your ministry diligently and faithfully showing forth the love of Christ if so say I do relying on God's grace and folks responded in the same way. Some uh, used their own words to say things like, God help me, I think was <laughs> maybe a response. But we are relying on God's grace as we move forward in ministry, always relying on God's grace in ministry. So now questions for you in the congregation, those of you who are here in person, those of you who are at home. Uh, we will have some words on the screen that we can say together. Uh, that will express our willingness to support uh, these uh, steering committee members in 2021. Uh, here are the words, and let me begin by saying, Members of this household of faith, you have heard the promises or seen or been told of the promises of our brothers and sisters in Christ who have answered God's call to service. Let us affirm our intention to live in covenant with them and witness to the commitment we now make. So those of you here, we can say these words together. Those of you who are joining virtually, you're welcome to put your support in your comments. You can even send an email to the church. Let's show our support to the steering committee for 2021. And let's say these words together. We gather in celebration of the joy that is ours to be partners with you in the service of Jesus Christ. We promise to love you, honor your leadership, and assist you that together we may be a faithful church of Jesus Christ. Let's pray together. Eternal God, you have called these people to serve you in this household of faith, which you've entrusted to our care and keeping. Send your Holy Spirit on them, that they may serve among us with honor and faithfulness. Help them to be diligent in their duties that your church may prosper in the mission you place before it. May their example prove worthy for all of us who follow as we are united in Christ's ministry to the glory of your name. Amen. 
So in the name of Jesus Christ and on behalf of the people of Faith Congregational Church, we rejoice to announce Steering Committee of 2021, you are now installed. Why don't we give them a hand? <laughs> Special Sunday. When we l I look forward to what God has in store for us in 2021. We're going to use, like what Dominic was telling us earlier, we're going to have to use creativity because this is a new day. It's a different time. We've never done this before. So that means uh, we will be relying on God's grace to be creative in the way that we can continue the work of the church and reach out in love to people uh, that are around us. Let's prepare our hearts for the sermon and we will... Uh, after this song, go into our time of prayer. Uh, look what the scripture has for us today and listen for the word of God. Let us pray. God of heaven and earth, we gather in the name of Jesus to hear your holy word, to be immersed in your spirit. Speak to us with grace and truth and pour out your love upon us that this temple may resound with joyful shouts of glory. We bring to you today the joys and the concerns of our hearts. We give you thanks for all the gifts that you have given us. We pray for those who are in need of healing and wholeness. And we lift up one another as we go through this season of uncertainty in our lives. 
God, we know deep within our hearts that by the power of your loving presence, you are able to accomplish abundantly far more than we can ask or imagine. Send down your Holy Spirit, O God. Tear open the veil of heaven and speak to us as beloved children that we may hear and believe the good news of your word made flesh, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We have uh, two scriptures this morning that we're going to be looking at. These are both taken for our lectionary text for today. Today is the day we celebrate the baptism of Jesus. Jesus um, goes through his maturity process rather quickly in the Christian calendar. We celebrated his birth a few weeks ago, and uh, he's already to the place where he's uh, being baptized. So the first text that we're going to be looking at is taken from the Gospel of Mark. This is the story of Jesus' baptism himself. And then also we'll be looking at a text from the book of Acts. And this is the story of baptism uh, within the first generation of the church. And we'll see what these descriptions of baptism are like. And then we're going to be thinking about our own baptisms today. First we have Mark 1 verses 4 through 11. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And the people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the Jordan River confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel hair and a leather belt around his waist. He ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descended like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. Our second text is taken from Acts. This is Acts 19, verses 1 through 7. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No, we've not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, in what name or into what then were you baptized? They answered, into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on him, on them the Holy Spirit came upon them and they spoke in tongues and prophesied all together there were about 12 of them may God add a blessing to the reading of these words this morning and we will be talking about your baptism or our baptism so we can see in our text here that there seems to be two different types of baptism. There's John's baptism. We can see that it emphasized repentance and forgiveness of sins. And then he even talked about who would come after him, Jesus, and that Jesus' baptism would be with the Holy Spirit, or some say with the Holy Spirit and fire. Now, in the Christian tradition, we could maybe even say there's a third type of baptism, and maybe some of you have experienced this yourself, and that's the baptism as you are born or just after you're born. Oftentimes, parents will bring their children to be baptized in the church. This wouldn't be a, a baptism where there is a confession of sins um, because it's just a baby, <laughs> and uh, and wouldn't it be nice to be a baby where we are, are not uh, 
weighed down with the burdens of, of sins. Uh, so there is a fresh and new start in a child. And of course, these baptisms are really all about bringing a child into the covenant relationship with God. It's bringing a child into the family of God. And uh, oftentimes, theologians will talk about that we're born into some kind of a sin. So this wouldn't be the type of sin where I say, I'm sorry for something, but it's just kind of cleansing the DNA that we were that we were born with. So that's the third type. Just wanted to leave a note of it. We're just going to talk about these first two types of baptisms. And I'd like for us to think about what these baptisms mean to us in our lives. So John's baptism, again, it's a baptism of repentance. Repentance means to go the other way. So if you're going this way and you head back, that's repentance. You change your mind, you change your direction, you change your life. This is about change. And in order to do that, you kind of have to say, I was wrong. I'm, I was going in the wrong direction. And I needed to go that way, and I was going this way. I messed up. And so there's a focus on me not living right and me wanting to live right and turning back around. And oftentimes that is kind of a pivotal point in people's lives where they say, I thought a certain way, I lived a certain way, and after I was baptized, I changed my way of living. Now, there is kind of a side effect to entering into this way of thinking or entering even into a faith community, and that is if we start our relationship with God or with the faith community with these words, I was wrong, it's very easy for us to hold on to those words and keep repeating those words over and over and over again. And how many know that oftentimes the church is known as a place where you join to be reminded of what a wretched person that you are <laughs> or what a bad person you are and you're always having to say I'm sorry I'm sorry God forgive me God forgive me uh, this is really not uh, the intention this repentance baptism is really kind of a one-time thing and the uh, you know forgiveness is kind of a part of life it's not meant to be some some heavy heavy thing if we if we look at, if you look closely at uh, the way th that John describes baptism and, and even his words about baptism when he talks about Jesus he says I'm not worthy to untie his uh, his sandals and so it's interesting that he's baptizing about repentance I'm wrong I'm not worthy and he's still kind of thinking that way that in comparison to where I want to be or where where God is I just can't get there. So this, this first type of baptism, it's a good start. It's a good change. It moves us in a certain direction. But like John says, this is really not what it's all about. There's another one coming. And there's another type of baptism. There's another type of uh, way of relating to God that's there for us. This is the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the baptism that Jesus brings. When we focus on our baptism of repentance or have a view of this, we might uh, fall into this uh, way of looking at the world that is, how can I fix things? Now, how many of us look at the way life is today and say, wow, there's a lot of things that need to be fixed? I mean, I don't think anybody would say something otherwise. And sometimes, some days, some weeks, some years, uh, we say, well, that one was a lot me more messed up than the other. So there's this focus on these things are wrong and these things need to be fixed. And uh, there is, there is uh, if you're looking time-wise, oftentimes what we're doing is we're saying what was done was wrong, so we're looking to the past, and we're going to fix it and make it right in the future. So we're kind of either looking in one direction or the other. We're either looking back at what we've done or we're looking forward at how we can fix things. Uh, the Apostle Paul talks about this way of living, of kind of realizing that we need to make our lives better. And in Romans 7, he talks about this uh, kind of awakening that he had when he first started his relationship with God. And he talks about how I want to do the right thing, and I try to do the right thing, and I can't do the right thing. And then when I uh, know that I need to avoid the wrong thing, I end up just doing the wrong thing anyway and he ends chapter 7 with this phrase what a wretched man or what a wretch that I am who will save me 
Now, if you end uh, the book, or if you end chapter 7 of Romans and you just close the book and, and say, wow, that's a terrible story, that's not the end of the story. But I think in a lot of ways that can be where a lot of us, even people of faith, find ourselves caught in this cycle or in this loop. I'm going to share with you some words from, um, <laughs> this is a, uh, somebody who posted in a forum uh, online. So I don't know if you're familiar with forums. It's kind of a thread of a first person ask a question or make a statement, and then you have people responding to it. You see these like in comment sections and so on. And they can be very interesting to follow, particularly if it's a topic that you're interested on. They can kind of get out of hand sometimes because people get very opinionated and whatever. This is taken from 2015, and the name of the person that posted uh, this uh, first statement in this forum, his name is Evil Hamster. I don't think that that's his legal given name, but uh, for some reason that's, that's, that's his name. And what he's commenting on is he's commenting on uh, how he tried to install Windows 10 on his computer and what happened after that. If anybody has a, a, a Microsoft PC and you installed Windows 10, you may, you may have some compassion or feelings of empathy with Evil Hamster's words here. So listen to this. This is what Evil Hamster says. This is 2015. In computer terms, I am equivalent to a preschool child. So I would appreciate it, uh, an easy to understand answer as much as possible. I ran the Windows 10 installation last night on my Lenovo laptop. Today, it is stuck in an endless loop of preparing automatic repair, diagnosing my PC errors, and wanting to restart. I can't get past the limited choice of options and actually do anything useful. I just want to get rid of the thing and go back to Windows 8. I'm too computer stupid to know how to do this. Please, can anybody clever out there help me using as little computer jargon as possible? I only recently got the laptop. I don't have a recovery disk. I thought, a lot of times in our Christian walk, we can feel just like evil hamster that we're stuck in a loop. We've got this new life. We got Windows 10. We're excited. It's something new. Things are going to be great. And as soon as we get into this new life, we get into this cycle of, I want to do better, but I can't do better. I want to do better, but I can't do better. And it's this endless loop that might even get us to want to go back to the way we used to be. Anybody ever want to have Windows 8 again instead of <laughs> Windows 10? So this is kind of where the Apostle Paul was in the seventh chapter of Romans. Uh, but, there is, but there is hope. The hope is in Jesus' baptism. Jesus' baptism is a baptism of the Holy Spirit, and it's a baptism that focuses us focuses us on what God is doing right here and right now. The baptism of Jesus, we see he goes into the river and comes out, and as soon as he does, the heavens open, the Spirit descends, and he hears these words of God, you are my beloved Son, in you I am well pleased. Now, I thought it's interesting. You know, Jesus hadn't even started his ministry yet. He hadn't done a thing. He hadn't gone out and healed anybody. He hadn't preached wonderful sermons. He hadn't done any miracles. He hadn't gone and, uh, you know, shown the sacrificial love of God on the cross. He hadn't been raised. He hadn't done anything. But God says to him, you're my child and I'm pleased in you. And that's not something that is looking to the past or looking to the future. It's not focused on what we can do or what we can't do. It's not something that can be caught in a loop. It's something that is a reality always. And so this, I think, is a part of this baptism of the Holy Spirit is the realization of who you really are. 
And it's, it, it, it shifts its focus. The baptism of repentance says, I used to do things this way, and now I'll do things this way. And it's all about me, 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 and what I can do or what I shouldn't do. Whereas this baptism of the Holy Spirit is about what God is doing in your life or what God is all about in this, in this moment. So we can see it's a focus on what life is really about. Now, I'm going to look at a, let's look at another little story about the Apostle Paul. Now, as, as we know, the Apostle Paul was not a fan of Christ or the Christians. He was, uh, you know, he, he went out of his way to make sure that they had a miserable life because he was not in support of what they were doing or the way that, that they were thinking. And as he was going on one of his uh, journeys to persecute some Christians, he came into contact with the living Christ and he was knocked off his horse and he fell to the ground and he had a vision and God talked to him. Jesus talked to him. And, and as soon as this experience happened, this life-changing experience happened with Paul, he became blind and he was blind for many days. And so they called in somebody from the community who was a man of God to come to the apostle, not the apostle, Paul yet, he's just Saul at this point, and to, and to bring him some words or some healing. And this is where we pick up the story. This is Acts 22. A certain Ananias, who was a devout man according to the law, and well spoken of by all the Jews living there, came to me, came to Paul, standing beside me and said, Brother Saul, regain your sight. In that very hour... I regained my sight, and I saw him. Then he said, The God of our ancestors has chosen you to know his will, to see the righteous one, and to hear his own voice. For you will be his witness to all the world of what you've seen and heard. And now, why do you delay? Get up, be baptized, have your sins washed away, calling on his name, and after I've returned to Jerusalem a while, I was praying in the temple and I fell into a trance. And I saw Jesus saying to me, hurry and get out of Jerusalem quickly because they will not accept your testimony about me. And I said, Lord, they themselves know that in every synagogue I imprisoned and beat those who believe you. And while the, uh, the blood of your witness Stephen was shed, I myself was standing by approving and keeping the coats of those who killed him then he said to me go for i will send you far away to the gentiles this is an amazing life transforming experience of the apostle paul he was blind and now he could see and he could hear and he could know the will of god and in that moment he realized god is speaking to me right here and now and god is calling me and i'm I'm in the middle of God's purpose and what God is doing in this world. God is going out and sharing this good news with the Gentiles. And he says, Paul, help me out. Do your part. And so he becomes a part of it. So Paul sees and hears what God is doing. His purpose is made known. It's very similar to what we see in the baptism of Jesus. It's, it's acknowledged that he is uh, chosen by God. He's special in God's eyes, and God wants to use him to do his will. Uh, this is this ongoing now relationship with the Holy Spirit that is like the baptism of Jesus. Now, just to make things a little bit fun, there were, there's this one little word that stood out reading these passages. And it's a word, uh, I usually just don't even bother to pronounce the Greek word because I know I'm going to get it wrong, but the word is mello, M-E-L-L-O, and it could be melo, and it could be mello, but I'll just say mellow. That word mello is a word that means something like this. It means to be about to, or to be to the point of, or to be always. So this is a word that really focuses on the point of right now. now. If you think about what right now is, right, somebody's getting a lot of <laughs> action going on their phone. <laughs> um, the, uh, the word mellow talks about this point in time. 
And, and if you think about this, this is funny to do. When is now? When is now? Now is right now. And, and, and now it's not now anymore. Now it's now. And so it's on this point. And it's easy to think about the past and to think about the future, but the now is this little tiny little point in, in time and place. So mellow is used in two places in our scriptures here. So if we're, if we're living in now, we can see that this word was used when Paul was getting his sight back. Ananias said to him, as soon as the scales fell off Paul's eyes, he says, and why do you delay? Or what are you waiting for? And they use that word mellow. What are you mellowing for? This means he was moving from this idea of seeing the world as past and future, this, this place where we get stuck in this endless loop of trying to get away from our past, trying to change our future. He's being invited. If, I think if we look at that word mellow, he's being invited to live where God is working, which is right here and right now. It's easy to think about God's work as it, it happened before or God's working into the future to make something happen. But if we can learn to live in that little point in time where God is working, that's where the Holy Spirit is, work, is at work and that is where we can see the presence of God. This, I think, is what this baptism of the Holy Spirit is really all about. And to get just a, a tiny bit more heady and strange about it think about space now we've talked about this before the things that we know living today is that matter is made up of little tiny atoms if you remember this in your um, in your science classes and each little smallest part uh, an oxygen atom or a hydrogen atom or a lead atom whatever it is they're made up of little parts and do you remember the little models where you had the protons and the neutrons and the electrons and everything spinning around each other well what we realize is each one of these tiny parts is made up of a whole lot of empty space right in fact the a, a small atom almost looks like a solar system just like there's so much space between earth and mars and the sun and everything like that that's how every atom is. So most of everything that we have in this life is empty space. Those things, whatever we think is a thing, is just kind of a combination of little items, tangible, what we think is tangible items, but it's mostly empty space. Now, back to what we were talking about. I think the baptism of John it focuses us on tangible things. It focuses on things we can fix. It focuses on things that are broken. But it doesn't focus on the intangible thing, that empty space, which is where God is. God is in the empty space. If we're called to live in a baptism of the Holy Spirit, we could look at it metaphorically like this. We're not called to live over here or over there something ne some place near or some place far we're called to live in the empty space of god and where is the empty space of god it is everywhere it is everywhere beyond us it is everywhere within us this is just like the now it's just like the past the present and the future we want tangible things we want the past we want the future god wants us in the now and in the empty space this is the present work of god in our lives now let's uh, end by going back to the words of Paul where he said, what a wretched man that I am. If we go into uh, chapter 8, he goes into this long talk about what life in the Holy Spirit is like and how living a life in the Holy Spirit is so far different from the life that he was living before, even though he was living before as a religious person. So we're invited to this life in the Holy Spirit, this life in the now, this life in the empty space of God. And think of these words. This is Romans 8, 18. 
he says, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. And that word mellow is used again. The work of the Holy Spirit, the glory of God is revealed in us, through us, and around us right here, right now. This is what we're called into. This is what makes our view of life so different. We're not stuck in a loop. We're not stuck in the past or the future. We're just right in the moment with God. Uh, This is what the baptism of Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, is all about. So, a little abstract, but uh, I think by the power of the Holy Spirit, we can kind of start to feel and experience what it's like to live with God. Uh, As we uh, conclude uh, this sermon today and these thoughts about baptism, I'd like for us to give ourselves just a few moments to remember our own baptisms. So I brought here the baptismal bowl or font that we use uh, in baptisms, and sometimes these are baptisms of infants, and sometimes these are baptisms of adults. Uh, these are uh, this ritual w- with water is is used to bring us into a close relationship and a covenant relationship with God. And always in the words that we use for water baptism, uh, we pray at that very moment that we also experience the baptism of the Holy Spirit in our lives. So today, in conclusion, if we could take a moment and just remember those moments when we were baptized, whether it was when we were just born, maybe sometime later in our life, if we can think about the baptism of the Holy Spirit that we have received at some point in time, or maybe it's something that we feel like, uh, like in the story that uh, uh, Paul was talking to the early Christians, he asked them, have you received the Holy Spirit? And they said, well, we didn't even know that there was a Holy Spirit. <laughs> Maybe that that's something that, that you would long for or you're not really sure that you've had. So maybe in these quiet moments as we remember, let's be open to the work of the Holy Spirit in our hearts. Uh, and uh, n- we have before, you know, had everybody come forward and, and, and shared, but we'll have to do this uh, kind of in our hearts uh, I'll, I'll touch the water in my head. If you want to join in, you could either make the sign of the cross on your forehead. You can place your hand over your heart. You can just quietly reflect. Let's just take a few moments and remember the baptism uh, of Jesus and of the Holy Spirit in our lives. God, we come to you in this moment. and We remember the beginnings of our relationship with you. And God, we don't want to stay at the beginning. We, we want to go deeper. We want to experience this life as you have created it for us to experience. We don't want to be stuck in the past or far away from you. We don't want to be filled with worry and anxiety and looking to the future wanting things to change but but God we know that you are eternal have always been will always be and that when you invite us to relationship with you you invite us to live with you in this place of eternity where there's no time or space and where the reality of life is far beyond what we could imagine And as we remember our baptisms this morning, we ask that you would touch our hearts. You would bring us comfort and peace. You would bring us reminders. You would bring us encouragement. And most of all, that you would bring us the presence of your Spirit. We pray this in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. God, we love you and thank you for your presence today. Amen.
Let's take a moment and listen to this song as we reflect on the Word of God for us today.
Uh, one other announcement that was not uh, in our list here was if you have not picked up your church directory, uh, you can do so today uh, in the church lobby. And let's say happy birthday to Sybil Barrett Hedman. January 11 is your birthday. Happy birthday, Sybil. And Marlene Santum also on the same day, January 11, has her birthday. So let's celebrate with, uh, with these loved ones. As we leave this shared virtual space and in-person space today, let's make a commitment to stay connected with one another. Let's dedicate our offerings to the mission that God has called us to at Faith Church. And let's enter into this week with God's blessings. Let's pray. We give you thanks, O oh God, for every blessing and spiritual gift that you've poured out upon us. Let the gifts of our lives be a source of blessing in your world, all to the glory of your holy name. As your beloved children, O oh God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we thank you that all the blessings of heaven are ours. We pray this in the name of the one who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hope everybody has a wonderful week. Glad that you're able to join in worship uh, today, and we will go with this song, Yes, God is Real. Take care. See you soon. Woo! <laughs>